Welcome back to the Junior Small Pea Channel. Today is not going to be talking about the news, but more importantly, this is going to be a part two of the how to save money and buy gold and silver. A lot of you have been asking for it. I had a couple of you give me incredibly positive feedback, for which I thank you very, very much. It's very kind. Um, and a lot of you really enjoyed the part one of the video that I had done on my approach to saving money and buying gold and silver. So we'll just kind of talk about it here as we go. And uh, just bear with me. As I said last time, it, that was more of like a testimonial. And this, you know, I don't have a script for this or anything. It's more of just a conversation that uh, we take part in. Okay. This big arrow you see here. The big fat green arrow is your life. My life. Our lives. The lives of individuals. And the work and the energy that we uh, emit as we pass through this life. Um, obviously... Going in this direction is time, and you really can't go back on it. It just moves, and we're along for the ride, right? And there's a lot of things that take place on this path. Now, this is going to be more pertaining to the financial side of things. There's a lot of other decisions and variables and things that take place on our path that are far more important than money, right? Money is not the most important thing, but this video is about money. That's what the fat arrow represents. Your life, your energy, your work, your labors, the stores of your labor, and your investments, everything about your money. Let me just adjust this a little bit because the detail I want you to see up top. All right. Down here, this arrow is COL, the cost of living, which we all know the cost of living seems to always be going up. Things do not become cheaper because the currency we use if you look, there's a dollar right there, is always losing its purchasing power and its value. Anyone watching this who's familiar with economic history is very aware that since 1913, the dollar has lost 96% or more of its purchasing power. Everyone can talk to people who remember a truck, a brand new truck, on a car lot costing three to $5,000 merely 30, 40 years ago. Things become more expensive. In the 1960s, gas was 25 cents a gallon. Today, it's $3 a gallon. Okay, so as long as you understand what all the arrows are, we can start discussing this. This currency becomes worth less. The cost of your living is going to increase over time, and you are on this trajectory here, earning money and spending money. The most important detail in this diagram is at the very end here. Let's call that your retirement or your latter years the years where you become less productive, the arrow seems to stop and you're left with a amount of money there. That is somewhat of a fixed number. That number in the future does exist. There will come a time where you are no longer as productive as you are and you will have basically a U. U is that, that number. We're going to call it U because it's you. It's your worth, it's your net worth, your gross, whatever you want to call it. It is the amount of money you are worth or you have available to you in the future. And all the different dollars and cents that come, you come into contact with and accumulate through your labors on this path ultimately will accumulate to equal a number here. That along that path are many different little outlets. You can see these are siphons, parasites, things taking that money away from you. There are also arrows of new money coming in. Uh, whether it be an idea that you have uh, for a new venture, uh, something that you came up with or produced or sold, maybe you uh, made an investment, maybe you found some things that, that were worth more and you, you buy them and then you sell them. So there's those things that take place along the way as well. Maybe you, uh, you recycled some old goods you had. You go through the garage, you sell some things on eBay or whatever, and you've sold them and that money comes back into your path. But ultimately... You have a lot of things trying to pull your money out of your pocket. You got interest rates on everything and anything. As I've always said, you want to get rid of as much interest as possible. Avoid interest. Interest equals death. Not really, but you know what I mean by that. Interest is bad. It's just not good for you. It takes so much away from what you could be here. 
So you want to avoid paying interest on everything. You know, when you're at the store, try to pay the cash for things. I mean, I, I don't want to get into too much detail on this. Just know the interest is bad. I think we can all agree on that. You need to do it at times. A mortgage, of course, is appropriate. None of us can buy a house cash. I can't. I don't know anyone who can, really. Um, you're going to have family and kids along the way, possibly. But uh, there's a lot of money that's going to be poured into these ventures here. Um, you've got a lot of other things that have taken money away. You've got the electricity bill, which you're always going to have. You know, you got to pay for your energy, your power, um, gas. You've got your car up here. You got to put gas in your car, right? So you know, you're going to have more than one car along this path. So you're going to have multiple. You know, cars just hemorrhage your money, right? I mean, anyone who's owned vehicles knows that they're always worth less than what you paid for them, and they always cost money to keep going. So. And um, I forgot one little detail. The dollar ultimately ends up down here at an unknown date, and it's just on fire because it's worth nothing. I thought that was... Some of you would get a kick out of that. I think it's kind of funny. All right. Well, you're on this path. You have a fixed amount of money at the end. I made an analogy once before that it's kind of like you're a big grizzly bear and you're fishing on the side of a stream. There's only so many salmon that are going to swim by that you're capable of grabbing and keeping and eating. Uh, those salmon represent the dollars, the monetary units, the currency. They're going to pass, pass by you in life as you work and, and earn them. It is your job. It is your responsibility and nobody else's. It is your job to hold on to and retain as many and as much of those monetary units as possible. In storing them as wealth, whether in through savings, locking them up in gold, and in a lot of ways, one way you can do that is reduce your monthly expenditures. Reduce the amount you spend every month on other things. One way that I do that, I'm not telling you you have to do this or forcing you to do this, is that's my cell phone. When I pull it out, people laugh at me. I'm not joking. I get laughed at for owning a small flip phone which is actually um, something that 20 years ago people people would marvel at the, the capabilities and the technology of it because it looks like something that came out of Star Trek but, and today because it's not a fancy doodad I'm laughed at but this thing cost me about 10 bucks a month on a family plan to run as opposed to a $100 data package I look at it this way I mean, I'm saving $90 a month by not having internet and music and, and video and all kinds of wacky data and I'm taking that ninety dollars a month and putting it elsewhere so that I can have it not here but out here maybe in the future it's just more important to me it's not a priority to have all that I don't need to watch a basketball game while I'm riding in a cab now there's other monthly expenditures you could look at eliminating or reducing phone bills um, that are for your hardline phone at your home cable satellite um, you know, the automatic withdrawals and deductions for entertainment or things like Netflix or this or the Amazon. Um, there's so many little things. How many times are you offered, oh, it's just this much a month. It's just this much a month. Sign up for this and we'll take out this much a month. Magazine subscriptions. Who gets magazines anymore? There's some good ones, but really, who needs magazines? They're cover to cover, bunch of advertisements. Don't need it. I don't need you to tell me what to buy, what to wear, how I need to smell, how my hair needs to look. I just don't need it. Sorry. Keep your magazines, I'll keep my money. See you at the end. See who's got more. It's uh, There's a lot more to it than this, obviously. But there's so much along this path, it's your job to just kind of put the blinders on and keep going and punch forward and try to retain as much money as you can. Now, again, I'm trying to... Money's not the most important thing in life. Like it says in the book of Revelation, Revelation there may come a day where you'll have to toss all your gold in the street and beg for bread. Um, if you're in a desert, you'd give all your gold for a glass of water. It's not the most important. I know that, and there's much more priorities in life, much more things we should be paying attention to other than money. However, we do need to guard our, our wealth and be good stewards of what we're given. We need to be able to control ourselves our, um, and our expenditures and not just be you know, ignorant consumers that just blow all our money on every advertisement we see and just throw our money away. Because it's our... You follow me here? Does that make sense? I don't want to sound like I'm a greedy Scrooge and miser. But, <clears throat> the point of this video is to encourage people to save 
save as much money as they can to get out of debt, to not pay interest rates, and to hopefully one day have a nice little stash of gold to call their own that they can use in the future and to have some form of financial stability. Because financial stability also leads to a, a more tranquil and peaceful existence at times. Um, being in debt is not a good thing. We all know that. You can only serve, uh, you cannot serve two masters. And when you're in debt, you're basically a slave to the, to the person who holds your debt. Now, if you have a hard time saving, which a lot of us do, I myself had, if I sat here and told you my, my full history, my past, there were times when I was younger where I had a very difficult time managing my expenditures and my credit. I, mean, I had a credit card in my, in my pocket. When I did, it would be like money burning a hole in my pocket. I just wanted to pull that thing out and swipe it. I wanted to get whatever, whatever I, 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 the world was limitless to me. It was like, I can buy whatever I want. I got this piece of plastic. All I have to do is swipe it and that thing belongs to me. Well, it doesn't. You just swiped it and that thing that you just bought belongs to somebody else and you have to pay for it and you're going to pay them interest, which is more than it's worth. So again, always avoid the interest rate. Whenever you're buying something like a car and they want to put add-ons to it and roll it into the loan for six years or five years, remember that means whatever they put on that add-on, like $100, $200, $300, $300, and they're going to roll it into your loan, they tell you, you're now going to pay six years worth of interest on whatever you just put on that car, whatever add-ons, I don't, whatever they may be. Um, and that goes with a house, you know, this fee or that fee, anything you roll into a loan, you're going to be paying interest over the duration, so you end up paying more for it. You buy a $5 cheeseburger on a, on a credit card, and um, you keep that balance for 10 years because you're just paying minimums here and there, you might end up paying 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars for a five dollar cheeseburger because you paid interest on it for a long time. Is that clear? Yeah, does that make sense to anybody? I hope so. So, in somewhat of a screwy bit of a summary, as you move on this path in life and you get to you in the future, and there's that that amount of money that you're going to have, which is fixed in life and is really it's your job to control all these variables along the way. Store as much money as you can when you can. If you have an extra buck or two, don't go buy a coffee with it. Don't go buy a latte. Put it in a bucket and change jar or something and then uh, save it until you can buy a couple ounces of silver. And when you get a bunch of silver, maybe you can trade in a bunch of that silver for an ounce of gold. And then the more of this you save, if you get a big inheritance, don't go out and buy a brand new car. Go out and buy a stack of gold. But don't avoid fun in life. Still, you know, I still go on trips. I still have fun. You guys have seen my videos. I've I, I've traveled. I go to different places. I've been to Hawaii. I've been to Rome. Um, been all over North America. I still do what I can when I can. But I also make it a very strong point to save when I do work and try to save my labors and storm away. And and the one vehicle, one of the vehicles I choose to do it, is gold. So, if you want to save money and buy gold and silver, the path to doing that is by just doing it. If you focus your mind on it and you focus your energy on saving it, as much as you focus your energy and mind on other things, it will become a reality. Now, I'm not talking about some new age mumbo jumbo where we're, or if you think it, it will happen to you. No. But if you make it a priority in your life, that hey, I'm going to save this money. You'll you'll be you'll be able to do it. You can do it if you have a good job. Get a good job. Get a good education. If you're really young, you're only like you know you're still in high school and you're somehow watching this rather than uh, some crazy dumb stuff on the internet. Well, good for you. Um, not that this is some brilliant monologue by any means, but if you happen to be here because you want to save money and you wanted some motivation to do so, hopefully that's what I'm doing, giving you a little bit of motivation, then uh, do it. Make it a priority. Save your money now while you're young. You know, Get a good education, though. get a good job. Squirrel it away. Work while you're in college if you can. Uh, don't take out too many student loans that you don't need. Like I know a lot of people, they get their student loans and they try to live on them and they live like the Charlie Potatoes, like they're uh, you know, a high roller. They get all these student loans and they buy... You know, $3,000 mountain bike, a brand new pair of skis, 
brand new entertainment system, brand new music system, brand new car, new clothes all the time, treating their friends to this and to that. And it's not their money they're blowing. They're blowing some bank's money that's loaning it to them and charging them interest. So be frugal. But also don't forget to have fun. And don't forget the important things in life either. You know, it's still good to give. To be, it's better to give than to receive. So give gifts and be kind to strangers. And, uh, you know, be a good person overall. And hey, if you get to the end of this and the last check you ever wrote bounces before you pass away, I guess, you know, you had a great time along the way, there you go. But ultimately, for me, I'm hoping to leave my kids with a little bit more than I had. And uh, I'd like to be more comfortable and not have to work when I'm an old guy up here in the future. And so, I'm trying to squirrel a little bit away now and make good decisions at this time in my life. I hope you can do the same. I hope this diagram somehow uh, aids you in your endeavors on your your big green path here. All right, that's it for this installment of the Junius Malpy channel. As always, appreciate the comments, appreciate you being here, and I hope you all have a good and happy evening. And remember, avoid interest at all costs, because interest is death. <laughs> all right, thanks. Have a good one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment.